Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome into the latest edition of the Ghostly Take, as I'm going to be posting this from my hotspot today because of the wind. For some reason, my Wi-Fi is not letting me use Skype and record stuff I wanted to do with people, but I can do solo stuff and put it on for a short time to post, and I wanted to definitely do something after that great Perseverance Lehigh Valley Phantoms win against the Hershey Bears to snap the Bears' streak at the PPL Center as they win 4-3 to three on a nice crashing-in goal by Derek Pouillot, who's been doing very good as a veteran uh, defenseman for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. He, of course, was a guy... <clears throat> Excuse me. He, of course, was a guy that was picked by Pittsburgh back in 2012 and actually has NHL experience and now is having success here with Lehigh Valley and doing really well where if we do have injuries, God forbid, with how good Pouillard has looked for Lehigh Valley, I would be pretty confident in him filling in for about a 5-10 to 10 game such stretch just like uh, Prosser filled in really well for that one game and then hasn't seen ice time since when it comes to the NHL level. But Morin, a big thing I wanted to bring up defense first, was Morin moved back to defense in last night's game against Hershey. And he looks his best, he looks his most zoned in, and he looks like he's the best skater and best player when he's on defense. He honestly, I saw one of the guys that's big on analytics, I'm blanking on his name on Twitter now, that does great AHL stuff. I'll make sure I get it into the next video, his name. But uh, he talked about how analytically and also just eyesight-wise, he was one of their best defensemen on the ice yesterday. Um, he ended up playing with Wiley um, when he was paired with Wyatt Wiley, who obviously is our uh, fifth-round pick from 2018. And uh, he's a guy that has been doing pretty consistent since getting to the AHL himself, Wyatt Wiley, and has looked pretty solid, I believe, as well. And Mason Millman also continues the youngster, the underager, the defenseman that we were able to snag that seems like he might become a fourth round steal in the 2019 draft has looked very solid and consistent for the Lehigh Valley Phantom. This team is one because their defense kind of pushes their offense when they're at their best. They're aggressive, but they're smart aggressive, and they're aggressive on both ends where their defense kind of helps facilitate their offense. Morin had to go back to defense because of injuries. But I think along with the great Jamie Baskell of Flyers Nitty Gritty, which is one of the places this video will be posted as well as Sports Fanatic News, please subscribe to both places, that having Morin on defense is the best for him and the best for his career development. Uh, the Flyers, it's not like they're completely locked in on defenders. You have a very solid top four if Ghost keeps developing the way he is with Provy, with Sanheim, with Myers. Hag's been solid. Obviously, Braun's uh, been okay, but getting slower, so you would like to bring in someone that's a little bit quicker on escape. If you can have more in development in that great shock blocker brute force of a 6'7 man, that's going to be great addition to add to the Flyers' defense in the future, and I think his health is the only question. If he stays healthy, he's going to be really good. Uh, we also had the return of the Big 19, uh, Isaac Ratcliffe, returned yesterday, the 6'6 forward that the Flyers picked in the second round of 2017. He has a lot of skill and speed for his size. He showed it yesterday on the goal by Tanner McMaster, which Ratcliffe was able to get a nice wrist shot off that Tanner McMaster was able to deflect in front of the net um, for what would have been the second goal, Lehigh Valley goal, of the game. So that was a very nice play by Ratcliffe. In his first game, he was buzzing around the ice. He was honestly one of my top players of the game. I would throw him into the top three players of the game. He was just buzzing. He was performing very well. It didn't look like he missed a beat, and Scott Gordon even talked about that in his post-game presser uh, when he was asked questions by myself and other reporters that Guys like him, he came back and just didn't seem like he missed a beat. He's been out for over a year, and he just looked great in his first game back. And that was huge and great to see for the Flyers. This guy is a guy that can quickly come back to being a top prospect again because of his skill set, his size, and the way he plays the game. He brings the old school to the new school because he has the skill and all the ability, but he also has, obviously, that great brute force with the size and ability to go through people, which is more old school. So Ratcliffe is a very interesting and fun player to watch. Keep your eyes on him, Flyers and Phantoms fans. He's going to be a great intimidating force. I also have to give a shout-out <clears throat> to Tanner Lazinski, who continues to do really well. There should have been a penalty on our first goal of the game 
that uh, Wilson was able to chip it up to Lazinski as he got tripped at center ice in the neutral zone. And then uh, Lazinski was able to send it across to Sandine, who was able to bury the nice goal, who's also looked good. Sandine has to get used to the ice, like Scott Gordon talked about in the presser as well. Coming over from Europe, you have the bigger ice to the smaller ice over here in the States. So he's getting used to that, but it seems like he's adjusting pretty well. He's had a hell of a start of a season. He's another guy that has speed but size and uses his size the right way, gets to the dirty areas. That's why guys were always interested in him at the NHL level, and the Flyers are able to get their hands on a nice little player in Linus Sandin, who could very well end up as Raffles contracts expiring being your replacement to just the way Raffle plays the game the right way, goes to the dirty air, is not going to wow you in points or anything, but definitely will wow you in just the effort and uh, gamesmanship he always gives. And that seems exactly like who Linus Sandin is. Um, when it comes to our other goal, we, of course, had a very nice play. Talking about Morin on defense, Wisdoms, who's killing it this year, was able to get it to Morin, and then Cal Riley was able to deflect the shot in for a goal, the captain, who's on route to 500 assists. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is how big the veteran presence is on this team. Uh, Tanner McMaster himself, uh, even now, would be a little bit um, of a guy that's been in the AHL. He's a bigger guy himself, uh, only at 5'10", but plays bigger, I guess is the way I should phrase it, because how he got that deflection goal in front of the net. He goes to the corners. I've watched every Phantoms game this year very well. Uh, he also goes in front of the net with the best of them. He's not afraid. He plays the game bigger, but he is only 5'10", so that's the way I should phrase that one. Uh, when it comes to Cal O'Reilly, he's one of the best career AHL players. Only 12 guys have ever got to 500 assists. He's about to get that marker. I believe he's 11 shy right now after scoring the goal and not getting an assist yesterday, which was obviously bigger. So you got the Ryan Fitzgeralds of the world. You got the David Kasha, who's even a veteran himself, the Derek Pouillot, the Chris Muellers of the world. They really helped this team come together and fully as one, and they really helped yesterday. You got to see... Guys like Sandin, who's not an AHL veteran, but a pro veteran playing in the Swedish pros and then coming over here, stepping up being big. Lazinski, who played in a great program, is doing big right away. Garrett Wilson had a big play, and then it looked like we could have another goal, but then it ended up being a high stick on him, so whatever. Um, and then you saw young guys like Hogberg. You see uh, Ratcliffe step up when he first came back. McMaster, this team just has a great mix of veteran and young presence, and that's huge when you got guys like Forster and Ratcliffe, who also came back yesterday and played very well, Tyson Forster, and he might have to go back to the OHL soon along with Zaid, which is going to hurt the team, but this team has depth, and I'm here to tell you, they're fine ways to figure it out. This team has just had that perseverance. They're a contender in this league this year. The ways they beat Hersey, just battling with them, beating them twice in OT, and then now being able to get a goal late in the game by Derek Pouillot to be able to beat them. They've just been able to scratch and claw and always find ways to beat them while having, like Scott Gordon said, the power play sabotage itself. And I think as a final point, a big reason why, when I was able to overthink this overnight, is you have new guys coming back in Forster and Ratcliffe. They're very great contributing pieces, but they're not going to have chemistry with everybody. So it's a little bit easier when you have newer guys running around to be able to lose the puck and have some mistakes, which was what happened yesterday for the fear of Ari goal and also the actual Johnson Fialbi, I think is how you say his name, breakaway goal um, that they were able to score where their other was on Shane Gershik. I thought Sandstrom played a pretty damn good game. He stepped up, made a lot of great kick saves and just side-to-side -side saves. He was sliding really well in the net. Um, those goals, that, the three goals that the Hershey Bears scored, there's no chance in hell he was uh, going to have a chance to save that, especially Gershik. Um, Fialbi really wasn't going to save, and then uh, Fioravari, you should not allow a two-on-one uh, shorthanded rush. So he didn't really have chances in those. I thought Sandstrom played well. Ratcliffe really stepped up, so those are definitely two players of the game. And then... Another player of the game, I'm going to have to give it to Sammy Moore. And he was able to get an assist. He looked like one of our best defensemen out there in his first game back on defense. He played a game earlier this season on defense as well, excuse me. But now this is his first game back on defense in a while. And he really stepped up, showed out, played really well. And they were able to persevere after having a bad second just due to the fact that the power play sabotaged itself, as Gordon said in a great quote. And that's not going to be able to happen going into the future. They have to fix that. 
But otherwise, this team persevered and got a lot of grade-A scoring chances, as Gordon said, in the second period, just missed the net on a lot of them in this game. They would have had more than 19 shots to the 26 for the Bears if they didn't do that. Both power plays faltered 0 for 4 for Lehigh, 0 for 3 for the Bears as the Phantoms keep the best PK in the AHL. But these team, this team just shows it can compete with anybody, unless if it's Wilkesbury, which gave us fits, that I think they're going to be able to figure them out because they're not as good as the Hershey Bears they'll be able to figure them out in the future. This team has been able to always figure out every team, and the Bears are a great team to be able to do it because they're always one of the AHL's best and are again this year, and the Phantoms have beat them three times already. Count them, three times already, and play them in Hershey again this Saturday. That's going to be a big game. The Bears are going to be pissed off after these three losses, but I think the Phantoms might be able to go in there again and persevere and get another win because why not? They've been good. I could see them rolling with Sandstrom again. I would get McIntyre back in a game. You got two good goalies. I know Sandstrom was probably the ideal starter going in before he was a taxi squad, and then Mac stepped up and really has done great. So I would be rolling with both of them and platooning them, but we'll see what happens. I have full confidence in both, so if they go with Sandstrom, I still think we're getting that big W on Saturday. But this was a great 4-3 to win on the goals by Linus Sandin from Tanner Lazinski. And then you were able to get one from McMaster on a nice wrister from Ratcliffe. That Hogberg, who's been playing well on defense as well, the youngster Linus Hogberg, was able to also pick up an assist. Then you were able to get the deflection by O'Reilly on the Morin and Zade Wisdom assist. And the crashing in goal by Derek Pouillot on the Garrett Wilson and Linus Sandin assist. This is just a very great game. That perseverance is the word to use. Lehigh just figured out a way to win. Again, the stars of the game are Sandstrom, Morin, and then I would also have to give it to Ratcliffe because he just played that good after being out for a year. It didn't look like he missed a beat, and he definitely deserves to be uh, praised for that. So I hope everyone enjoyed this edition of the Ghostly Take. I wanted to get a lot in there, so I went a little bit longer, but I hope you all enjoyed it. For Flyers Nitty Gritty, please subscribe over at Flyers Nitty Gritty. And Sports Fanatic News, please subscribe there as well as SteelFlyers.com, the great SteelFlyers.com. I hope you all enjoyed this edition of the Ghostly Take. Again, like, comment, and subscribe to Steel Flyers, Flyers Nitty Gritty, and Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe. This has been the Ghostly Take. Enjoy the hockey, everybody, and go Lehigh Valley Phantoms.